words of hope. Jesus said, I am the resurrection of the life. Who believes in me, though he die, shall live, and whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Blessed to the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield, in him my heart trusts. For we know that if our earthly tent be lived, be, be lived and is destroyed, we have a hiding place from God, home not made in the heavens, early in the heavens. Hear these words of greeting, friends. We're here today together to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Brother Augustine Browning. We come together in grace and grief, not acknowledging our human needs. May the God grant us grace that is open to pain that we might find Comfort and sorrow, hope in God, and life in resurrection. Friends, if you will join me in our invocation.
A reading from Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even these shall faint and grow weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. As I read 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to also who have loved his appearing. And no one comes to the Father but by me. 
If you had known me, you would have known my father also. Henceforth, you know him and have seen him. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Peace I leave with you, my brethren. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Methodists are a people who sing in their faith, and so our hymn of faith today is My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Would you join me as we sing together?
graciousness, generosity, and a heartfelt desire to help others like nobody else I've ever met. He was always there to lend a hand, even when he probably shouldn't have, and there was not a person alive who he was not willing to help and assist in some way. As a Christian, he was the most Christ-like person I have ever met. He lived out every day of his life Jesus Christ's teachings, and on spiritual matters, he gave me a great deal of advice. Um, so too in matters of the heart and the mind. He was always ready with a kind word and, again, a helping hand. And the lessons that he imparted to me, I will never forget. Um, every time I bend down to pick up a piece of litter, I always take the great man. <laughs> and I'd like to end with a quick story um, that took place in the backyard of uh, his old house on Honeyweed Street. Um, I was no more than 12 years old, uh, just messing around with a BB gun, and I was shooting holes through leaves in the backyard, and on one particular shot, I was especially careless, and I accidentally shot Brandon in the neck with the BB gun uh, while he was bending down to tend to a plant, as he often did. Um, and I was mortified that I had just killed my granddad. Um, thankfully, that was not the case. And he quickly stood up, and there was only a little bit of blood on his neck, and he wiped it off with his, with his handkerchief. And immediately, without hesitation, uh, he forgave me, and it was all over right then and there. Um, so that's just the type of person he was. And I'm thankful that all of you are gathered here today to remember him. Thank you.
He turned and she, Barbara said, was kind of staring at the corner. And she said, Dad, what are you staring at? What are you looking at? And he said, East Texas. And about five minutes later, he passed away. So Barbara said, who knew that heaven looks like East Texas? <laughs> I didn't know that either, but apparently that was the case for Dad. So I'll close by saying what I also said in my posting, that if you want to do something to honor his memory, do something nice for somebody else, and eat a stack of pancakes with maple syrup, which was a tradition that he and my mom shared for many, many years. I'm just going to tell a story uh, that illustrates what my dad was all about. It happens to be a true story. One of our, one of his ministries was in La Porta, Texas, and about 1970 in the spring, there were some troubles in the local schools. There was racial division between blacks and whites, and the black community believed that uh, some of their students who had gotten in, in trouble had been punished more severely than the white students, and they had other concerns of very few black faculty, the school board was all white. And they came up with an idea for having a community meeting and to try to air their grievances. Uh, so dad and one of his friends on the local ministerial alliance tried to coordinate the meeting and have the school board come visit the community and the old elementary school that had existed before the schools were desegregated. I asked dad if I could go with him to that meeting. We showed up. There were two or three other white people there, but it was mostly black uh, uh, gathering there. And the school board didn't show up. And they waited and waited. And finally, Dad and his friend, uh, one of the black ministers in town, decided they were going to go where the school board was gathering, which was in the normal school board uh, meeting room. They were refusing to come over and meet the black community on their, on their own turf. So they left. We all waited there. Uh, me and my friends from the basketball team and up late on everything, we wondered if they would be able to convince the school board to come to meet with the community. We waited 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and just about when the crowd was getting ready uh, to, to leave, the back door opened to the cafeteria where everybody was gathered, and in walked my dad's black minister friend himself and five white school board members. The audience stood up and, talk, and, and applauded. They weren't applauding for the school board. They were applauding the two ministers who had brought the community together. And they all stood up and applauded. And that always has reminded me, since I was there that night, of the scene in To Kill a Mockingbird, when Atticus Finch has defended an innocent man unsuccessfully, and he's walking out of the courtroom, and Scout and Jim are up on the balcony. Um, and black residents of the town stand up to honor Atticus Finch as he, as he walks out of the courtroom. And an elderly gentleman turns to Scout and Jim and says, Scout, Jim, stand up. Your father's passing. And that's what I think, that, I think that's the respect that my father was due. And that's what I remember of him. Stand up. Your father's passing. Since my dad saw fit to in include in his uh, obituary his three climbs of Long's Peak in Rocky Mountain National Park, including once of my beautiful mom, Jackie, I wanted to recall his first climb. It was in the summer of 1964. I was just about to turn 10. We went up the north face of the mountain on what was then called the cable route. The cables are gone now. But uh, it just so happens that in the morning sun, the rock in that area is in shadow, and it, it had iced over the night before we went up there, so there was no footing on this 45 degree slope. I was uh, trying to pull myself up just by my hands because I was on a sheet of ice, and I, I got stuck, and I told my dad, Dad, I can't make it. And he said, Mike, you have to make it. He was standing on an iron spike, and he gave me a hard shove of the rope, 
and I was able to reach up and grab an eye bolt on the cable, and from there, I, I was able to proceed on my own. And I think that's that's lesson for us. Just when you think you can't make it, gather your strength and carry on. Resurrection. 
I think as we consider where we are and what we're doing today, I want to mention three things that might be lessons for us today. First is we uh, find new life in our faith. When we come to the time of the death of the special loved ones, we think about those who have gone before. We sing at times about the saints who are in heaven, and yet we know that the things we enjoy today are a result of what they did when they were with us. And it's more important for us to remember that we can find life in our faith as we realize that what we do today will be paving the way for those who come after us. We can find new life in our families. One of the joys of life in the family, are the families that we belong to. They may be large, they may, may be small, but all of them have a special place for us. As we think about Gus and his life and his family, we also think about ours and we can consider uh, how important it is for us to learn at times like this, as we recall memories of days gone by, that we have a way to learn new faith in our families. And finally, I think we can learn that through the resurrection, we can find new life in the future. Our resurrection faith promises us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Even though we lose Gus as a person, we should always have his memory in our times with him. As we face the future, we can find courage and inspiration to face whatever comes knowing, I think, how Gus faced the last days of his life. He never departed from his faith as a child of God. How can we put a value on this? Our memories can for imagine the lives worthy of the resurrection. We can find life and inspiration in the life of Gus Browning. And today, I think we can find new life and new hope in the resurrection of Jesus.
It's printed in your bulletin. It should also be on the screen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, as you lead us through the changes of time to the rest and blessedness of eternity, be near and abide with us to comfort and uphold us. Make us to know and feel that your children are precious in your sight, that we live evermore with you, and that your mercy endures forever. Thankful for Gus's life, which you have given us for these years, we pray your help now to commit him unto you. Assist us to remain to our daily lives, to obey your will with faith and patience, and to bear our trials with fortitude and hope. And when the peace of death falls at last upon us, may we also find our perfect rest in you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you. 